What's up, everybody? Rob here. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are slowly but surely inching our way up to our first thousand subscribers here on YouTube. Really, it's like 760 something, but I'm going to say it's close to a thousand because that's a milestone I'm trying to get to. But if you are subscribed to this channel, if you click that red subscribe button down below, thank you. Really appreciate having you here as a subscriber. If you are like me, because I do this all the time, just like I could look up his name on YouTube, I don't actually have to click subscribe. I'm getting better about it lately. I'm subscribing to the channels I want to be subscribed to. Maybe wait till the end of the video. And if it's provided you enough value, think about clicking the subscribe button. It only costs zero dollars and zero cents. I know it's it's a tough decision. <laughs> all right. And if you want to smash the like button to help with the YouTube algorithm, if you wanted this message to reach more people, would really appreciate that. I know. It's annoying, gets redundant, but statistically it does really help if you say that at the beginning of your videos. And I do really, really appreciate it. Why is this phone right in front of me? It's kind of a, you think I'd have it over here, I'd have it over here. Really, it's just to remind me to recite this quote at the beginning of this video. This video is going to be all about what my stance is in this current precious metals market. The sky is falling, right? Or, you know, what's going on right now? I'm going to give my thesis on what I personally think is happening and what I'm personally doing with my capital and what I have been doing with my capital, hopefully to provide a little bit of clarity on the situation. But first, let's talk about this quote here, because I think it's extremely relevant to what's going on in precious metals right now. This is something that I failed to acknowledge about, I want to say, four or five years ago when I should have done what this quote is talking about. And it, I think it took putting my hand on the fire to actually burn myself. Somebody can tell you it's hot as much as they want, but when you're a kid, you just don't really believe them until you actually burned yourself. And then you go, actually, they weren't lying. It is hot. I think that's what this quote's all about, and it's something that I am doing my best to implement in my current trading strategies. So let's get on into this quote here. It never was my thinking that made the big money for me. It was always my sitting. You got that? My sitting tight. It is no trick at all to be right on the market. You always find lots of early bulls in bull markets and lots of early bears in bear markets. And their experience invariably matched mine. That is, they made no real money out of it. Men who can both be right and sit tight are uncommon. I found it one of the hardest things to learn. But it is only after a stock operator has firmly grasped this that he can make big money. It is literally true that millions come much easier to a trader after he knows how to trade than the hundreds did in the days of his ignorance. Jesse Livermore That quote reminds me of when I was obsessed with options and options trading. I still do them now, but I want to say back in 2013, I had bought a couple hundred shares of Tesla and I had made some money on it, but I wanted to make more and I wanted to make it quicker. And so my buddy told me, Hey, have you heard about options? And I didn't know anything about it. And this is before Robin Hood even. Now it's just like pretty much legal gambling going on um, on your phone. Let me get this out of the way. But I had to lose a lot of money in options. And if I had just sat on my hands when I had te Tesla stock and Apple stock, I would have made a lot more, probably worth three times more money than I am now. The only reason I was able to make a bunch of money on Tesla is because I learned from failing and failing over again on the short-term stuff that I finally said, you know what? I'm putting multi-year expiration on my call options now. I'm starting to bet years in advance. I'm not worried about battery day, which 
I think one of my buddies that watches this video, I gave him, I talked to him about that and I said, you know what? I think there's too much hype going on right now. I think there's too much hype. When everybody's doing one thing, it's time to do the other thing sometimes. That short-term hype, that prediction is usually wrong and it usually is doing a lot more effort to make minimal money or to lose money. And I learned that the hard way. It wasn't until I learned to put year, multi-year expiration. Multi, this is a different thing than precious metals, but some people trade options in precious metals, I guess. You could buy call options on SLV or put options on SLV. But anyway, it wasn't until I learned how to do multi-year expirations and put the, the um, strike price close to the money instead of being so risky until I actually made hundreds of thousands of dollars versus, you know, getting nervous on, you know, making a thousand here, losing a thousand here on the short term. So why do I bring all that up? There are a ton of talking hands. They really, they got these hands on YouTube and they talk about predictions. And they're, <laughs> there's a lot of predictions out there. You know, this is what's going to happen. This is the perfect time to buy silver. This is the perfect time to buy gold. This, this, that. What I would do and what I have done, I mean, since, I mean, if you go back in my videos, I don't really make videos to try to gloat or whatever, but I mean, I made videos back when silver was 17, 18, put that hundred thousand dollars of silver out when it was much, much lower than it is right now, because I've been consistently buying. I was buying a ton back at 12, 11 when it really fell at the beginning of the COVID pandemic. And I can tell you firsthand that the premiums jumped dramatically. Whenever it falls, the premiums jump dramatically because the sellers don't want to sell their product. I mean, put it this way. You go to your local coin shop today and silver's down and ask them for silver. They're either going to put a very high premium or they're going to tell you, ah, we're out of silver. They're not really out of silver. It's just in the back vault and they don't want to sell it. They want to hang on to it because it's limited. It's finite and they know it's going back up. So the point being Take the idea of prediction, crumple it up, throw it away, and then replace it with thesis. What is your thesis? Why are you buying precious metals? That's how I look at this situation. And I guess that's a good time to say that this is just financial education based on my opinion. It's not meant to be any advice in any way, shape, or form, as are all the videos on this channel. Gotta say that disclaimer. but. To get more deep into what my thesis is, is I'm seeing the dollar index. Actually, right now, let me check. The dollar index has been going up a little bit. It actually was down, headed down pretty pretty good there for a little bit. Went from 96 down to about, I think at one point it was in the 91s for a minute there, or the mid-92s. Um, let me see. Uh, dollar index is at 94.14 right now and going up. And... Silver is down big because of it. Now, at the beginning of the pandemic, silver fell all the way to 12. Right now, it's at 23.43 on the ask. To a lot of people, that's a pullback. Really, if you had been buying consistently all along, including those that are saying that this is a pullback, you would have actually made money, especially because the premiums are through the roof right now. So was it better to stick to a thesis or is it better to hope for a pullback? I think it's a better idea to listen to that Jesse Livermore quote and consistently buy. If you believe in this thesis, which is what I'm getting into. I don't believe what's going on. Just like back when Tesla, you know, when people were saying it was going bankrupt, I kept thinking to myself, I'm like, who, who would let this go bankrupt? You know, back then, let's see a little bit of off topic. I remember thinking if Steve Jobs was alive back when Musk was against a wall, I think he would have bought him out with Apple. I think he would have bought him out. I just don't think Tim Cook has the vision that Steve Jobs did. I think Steve Jobs would have seen how big electric cars are and how big Tesla was becoming and how beautiful of a brand it was. And would have said, hey, Elon, we'll take you. You need what, $50 billion, $100 billion, I think it was at the time? Some, actually, I think it was less than fifty. dollars um, But he had to beg, the, he was like begging the Saudis or some weird thing Elon was doing. It's like, anyways, a lot of people were saying it was going bankrupt. And I just kept thinking to myself, nah, it's too proprietary. I could see like Uber going bankrupt because there's nothing proprietary. That's why Lyft exists. But Tesla was so proprietary. It was so unique. I just didn't see it going bankrupt. So my thesis was different than the shorts in that time. 
The reason I say that is my thesis on precious metals hasn't changed. I don't buy the fact that the dollar is gaining value. I don't buy that. I think it's being diluted. Matter of fact, the last time the Fed spoke, the last time Poof Powell, Poof Powell over there spoke, they talked about how they expected an increase in inflation, that it wasn't going to be the norm. So basically what they're saying, and if they're saying that, they like to really be careful about what they say. If they're saying inflation's rising, it's really rising. If inflation is rising, do you think it's a good time for precious metals to go down? Do you think it's a good time for the dollar index to rise, the precious metals to go down? Do you buy that argument or do you buy a different argument? Is it becoming less expensive to mine these precious metals? You know, that's the things that we need to be looking at. The thesis hasn't changed. If anything, it's making it more and more apparent how undervalued these precious metals are. My thesis hasn't changed at all. I am still consistently buying precious metals. You know, is it the better metal to be buying, you know, platinum right now? Here's, this is 20 ounces of platinum. You know, platinum is down to 1861 on the ask, but the premium platinum, the premium, excuse me, is through the roof, through the roof. So is platinum the better metal to be holding right now? Is it gold? Is it silver? Personally, I think silver and platinum are extremely undervalued. I've always been saying that all along. I still think that to this day. The cost to mine this stuff is not going down. The amount of it above ground is not increasing dramatically. Sure, a lot of people are saying, you know, the industrial demand isn't there due to the pandemic, but the industrial demand will be there. And I think more people are going to start stacking precious metals, including central banks, because truthfully, the lack of trust in the dollar is going to continue to increase, in my personal opinion. To get, I guess, more, uh, to talk about it more in a broad sense, where do you want to store your money right now? The options are limited. We could store our money in a bank, sure. You know, let it sit there and get no interest. You could store it in a money market, which is going to give you a tiny, tiny, teensy amount of interest with a little bit more risk. Or you can put it in precious metals or you put it in the stock market. Um, the options are pretty limited. You know, do you want to get in real estate right now? Kind of, kind of a risky time to be in real estate. Precious metals, to me, it's not only just an investment or an insurance policy. To me, it's also kind of a bank account. Go to a bank and ask them for, I don't know, what we got, 500 ounces of silver or so, 600 ounces of silver, 20 ounces of gold, 20 ounces of platinum. I didn't feel like grabbing too much stuff out, but go to the bank and ask them for 60, 70 grand. See what they do. Be like, either they're going to say like, hey, uh, why do you need this that much money? What's going on? Or they're going to basically say, hey, uh, yeah, we can do that, but come back in a week. They don't have the money readily available. And what happens when the lines out the block if they have some sort of crisis going on and everybody wants cash well the person with precious metals can just go oh i have it right here their bank account was on hand they didn't have to ask you know this bank that's lending out their money and making money off your money your money is with them and they're making money off it and paying you nothing for that money and then if you all go back to the bank to get your money they won't have it and they need some time to shuffle things around Kind of like a guy named Bernie Madoff. Anyway, um, the options are very limited on where to put your, pre- your money. I choose precious metals personally. And I, I have a hard time believing the value of the dollar to be going up. I think the dollar index should really start crashing. Um, they've printed a ridiculous amount of money. Trillions upon trillions upon trillions of dollars. It doesn't make sense to print a ton of money and the value of that money to go up. If you print a ton of money and you plan to print a ton more money and you've admitted that inflation is rising more than you expected at the Fed, it doesn't make very much, it's not that good of a bet to say, actually, you know, I think the, the dollar is going to be more powerful. You know, I, I don't really buy that. And even if it did become more powerful, I think that the value of precious metals is so dramatically undervalued that it would have to skyrocket 
to compensate. So what do I think about this pullback? Am I nervous about it? What's going on here? Overall, I follow that same quote from Jesse Livermore. When Tesla was falling and jumping around, I remember it was up, you know, I remember it not very long ago at all, actually. This is prior to the stock split before it went over to 2000 plus. I mean, it was going from, you know, 300, I think down to 200, down to up to three something, down to two something. And it's like people were so worried about that. But if you had just been consistently buying all along, if you had just been consistently buying and believing in a long term thesis, it would have been so much better. It would have been so much better. So, without rambling too much on this topic, I think I've kind of um, touched on a, the broad subject here, and I plan to get more into the macro and the micro in later videos, but that's how I feel right now. Does it hurt? Yeah, I don't like to see precious metals falling, but do I know behind the scenes that the premiums are jumping through the roof? Do I know that dealers don't really want to sell their precious metals right now? Yeah. I see it on a firsthand basis, and that's why I've been gone a little while, because I'm one of those dealers, and I'm moving all of these precious metals every single day. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in precious metals a week. It gets pretty crazy. It gets pretty crazy. It's been very, very stressful, but there is a ton of demand out there, and there's not enough product. And every single time I see the metals price fall, the premiums skyrocket. So the overall sentiment is... My thesis, personally, not saying for you to do it. Again, this isn't any kind of advice. I consistently buy precious metals. I store my money in precious metals because I find it to be a much better option than a bank, especially during this pandemic. This video brought you some value. I know I said it in the beginning of the video. Please consider clicking that subscribe button down below. If you smash the like button, excuse me, really helps this video reach more people. Thanks again so much for watching. See you at the next video.